Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue to talk about uh, rational numbers. Rational strings will be subject. Um, when I was introducing integer numbers, uh, besides something which is, I would say, a homemade definition of minus 3 as the number which, if added to 3, results in 0. This is not a mathematical rigorous definition, because maybe there is no such thing as negative 3, which will result in uh, 0 if added to 3. So instead, I have offered a, a string-based notation. I have basically constructed new objects which looked like or plus 3, and defined operations of um, addition among them, and it actually followed that in that particular universe of integer numbers, which I have built using these abstract strings, um, I can basically do all the arithmetic operations. Um, that was fine for introducing an operation of subtraction um, and uh, now integer numbers are complete because operation of subtraction is defined on any two numbers in as much as operation of addition was defined only among the natural numbers but all of them. Now, we have similar situation when we are introducing rational numbers. These were introduced as a result, as a necessity to be able to divide any two uh, numbers uh, into each other. We know that we can multiply two integer numbers, but we cannot always define, divide one by another. So if I'm saying that I can multiply 3 by 5, that's no problem, but if I want to divide 3 by 5 among the integer numbers, that is not possible. So to overcome this, uh, again, homemade definition was, okay, we introduce number three-fifths, which if multiplied by five, gives three. Well, it's not good enough for definition because maybe there is no such number as three over fifths, uh, as three-fifths. We just, you know, we say a property of an object is defining an object. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes you can define the property of an abstract object when it doesn't exist at all. To constructively approach this particular problem is to basically create new objects from whatever elements you have. And in as much as I uh, created uh, integer numbers using these strings we were talking about with curly brackets, curly braces, whatever, um, I will try to do very much similar thing to introduce rational numbers. So. Um, if these are integer, instead of expanding the set of integer numbers into a set of rational numbers, I'm saying that rational numbers will be a completely different set. However, there will be a subset which we can call uh, pseudo. integer. This is the subset. And every element of integers, every element of integer set, every integer number, should have a corresponding element among pseudo-integer numbers, which are part of subset of rational numbers. And operations among integer numbers, like multiplication in our case and division whenever it's possible, should really correspond to the similar operation among the pseudo numbers. So that's the goal. And uh, let me start walking along this way, and I will introduce, I will constructively introduce the rational numbers by basically saying, okay, these are new objects which I'm going to construct. They are called rational. Um, okay, so here is the definition. Rational numbers are strings of curly braces, and in between you have two 
integer numbers separated by vertical bar. Well, obviously you understand that in the future we will probably write something like this, which is much more traditional. But I would like to break this tradition because this is a formal definition. Our rational number is not a number, so to speak. It's a string which consists of two braces on both sides, vertical bar in the middle, and two integer numbers on the left and on the right um, from the vertical bar. All right, so I have introduced these numbers, and uh, now I have to uh, operate upon them. So I have to define an operation of um, multiplication, because that's basically the ultimate goal, to operate uh, future numbers uh, freely as far as multiplication and division are concerned. So let's define an operation of multiplication. Well, there is one more thing which I actually um, did not say yet. And should not equal to zero. This is part of the definition. So my new set con contains all strings of this type where n is not equal to zero. And obviously you understand that you cannot divide by zero for whatever reasons. And that's why I have restricted my constructed number of uh, uh, constructed objects to um, to those where denominator, I will call the denominator and the and numerator, obviously, uh, in the future, where denominator is not equal to zero. Okay, so these are strings, nothing more than that. So first, what I'm saying is that there is one particular string, which is 1 over 1, which is a unity. Unity means that being multiplied by any other um, rational number in this particular incarnation as a string, it will result in the same string. So if I will do, I'm introducing an operation of multiplication. So this is the multiplication. If I am doing something like this, I will always have this, and vice versa. Vice versa means I am basically defining the commutative law in this particular case. So that's the definition of the unit actually is. If multiplied by anything else, it will result in the same that, that, that same anything else. Left to right or right to left. Okay, so this is one thing which we have defined by definition. So this new set of elements where m and n are any numbers, any integer numbers, one of those is this particular element. So I'm saying that this is it. This is the unit which the unity which will result in uh, this, this rule of multiplication. Another thing which I would like to say, again by definition, is by definition that if you have two um, rational numbers, rational string, whatever you want to call it, of this type, where m is any integer number, this will be a unity. What this basically means is, well, obviously, as, as, as you understand, in the future, an integer 123 will correspond to a pseudo-integer 123 over 1. So this is 1 over 123, which is an opposite number, result of the multiplication of 123 and 1 over 123 should be equal to 1. So I, by definition, I actually say that this is the rule of multiplication of my uh, numbers, my new numbers, my new rational numbers, which are actual strings. So for any number of this type, there is always an opposite of, of, of this type. Okay. Um, 
Saying that, I have to really introduce the rule of multiplication uh, between two rational numbers as introduced here. And the rule is very simple. If I have a over b and I'm multiplying c over d, where a, b, c, d are any integer numbers, by definition this is the result of multiplication of a by c, and we know how to multiply two integer numbers. That would be my numerator, and my denominator will be b times d. So this is the real multiplication, and this is the real multiplication between two natural numbers. So that's how I define my multiplication between two rational numbers. I multiply numerators and I multiply denominators. This is a rule, this is the definition of multiplication between two strings, which represent my um, natural numbers. Well, um, as a consequence of this, let me just prove a very simple uh, property of these numbers. You know that if you have uh, a fraction, let's say, 4 over 8, you can always reduce it to 1 half. So if there is a common multiplier in numerator and denominator, you can basically reduce the fraction to get, uh, to get a smaller numbers in, in both numerator and denominator. So let me do something similar with this. My property which I would like to um, prove is the following. Let's assume that there is a common denominator between common multiplier k, which um, is included in numerator and denominator. I would actually like to prove that this is the same as m over n. So that this string is equal to this string using these rules. OK, how can I prove it? Well, very easily, actually. I will use just these two rules, basically. Um, and, and here is how. I can say that this particular rational number uh, expressed as a, as a string of this type of quality is equal to result of multiplication of m m over 1 times k over 1 times, this is multiplication of rational numbers, 1, uh, 1 over n times 1 over k. Well, why is it? Well, obviously, if you multiply m over 1 times k over 1, according to this rule, m over 1, k over 1. It will be mk over 1, 1. So this will be mk over 1. And this, similarly, will be 1, 1 times 1, over n times k. And the result of multiplication of these two will be mk times 1 on the top and 1 times mk on the bottom. So that's why I can do this. But now, considering I have defined um, my operations in, in such a way that obviously I would like to say that all the commutative and associative um, laws of multiplication should be preserved, 
um, basically I can use the commutative law and, um, in, uh, and, and change the order of these two things. So instead of k, k over 1 and then 1 over n, I can put 1 over n first and k over 1 second. That's the, just the result of the commutative law, which should be part of the definition. Now, here, using dissociative law, I can say k over 1 and 1 over k. That results in, according to rule number 1, k over 1 and 1 over k, that's 1 over 1, right? So I can say that the whole thing is equal to m over 1 times 1 over n times, and these two guys will give me 1 over 1. Now, multiplication by a unity actually results in the same number I started with, so I can just completely wipe out this multiplication by 1 over 1, and this thing, again, using uh, using this rule is equal to m times 1 on the top, which is m, and 1 times n on the bottom. Well, a couple of lines of proof basically shows that we can reduce our rational number by the common multiplier. So that was basically the purpose. Now, as, as you probably have guessed correctly, all I have to do is to put into correspondence my integer numbers and, uh, and my new rational numbers. So again, if these are integers, these are rational numbers. This is a subset of pseudo-integer numbers. And they have to build the correspondence, but in such a way that if I have image of one integer number as a pseudo-integer, and I have an image of another uh, integer number as a pseudo-integer, then the result of the multiplication of these two integers should map into the result of the multiplication of, um, of their images, pseudo-integers. Otherwise, this correspondence is not really well defined. Well, obviously, any integer number n will correspond to, as you understand, a rational number, a string which contains 1 as the component on the right from the vertical bar. Similarly to the fact that 5 over 1 is actually 5, right? So that's the correspondence, and obviously there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between all integer numbers and all rational numbers of this type. Now, how can I uh, prove this type of correspondence? Okay, let's take number n, which uh, maps into rational number n over 1. Now, result of their multiplication here is m times n. Result of the multiplication of these two things, it's premature, result of multiplication of these two things, according to the rules, is, you remember, numerators should be multiplied by themselves as two integer numbers, and denominators should be multiplied as integer numbers. But this is 1, obviously, right? 1 times 1. And this is exactly which should be expected from the image of the MN. So MN maps to this. So either we do it this way, so we multiply and then map, or first we map and use the images and multiply according to the rules of the multiplication of rational numbers, we get exactly the same thing. Um, so that proves that our representation of rational numbers in, in this way allows a very well-defined mapping between integers and a subset of the rational numbers 
um, which we can call pseudo, pseudo integer numbers, and this correspondence is really well balanced, etc. But now, what's the advantage of introducing these numbers? Well, obviously, now we can divide anything into anything, and this is basically how. We can introduce operation of division I'm introducing operation of division. If I have rational number AB and I have another rational number C over D, and if you remember, neither B nor D are zero, then I can define operation of division between them as Operation of multiplication by reverse of this particular number. And what is the reverse of C over D? Well, it's D over C. Which, by the way, indicates that C also should not be equal to zero. Otherwise, this division is not defined. Now, why CG reverse is, is GC, as I was saying? Well, for a simple reason. Um, if you will multiply CG times GC, this is CG over GC. And you know we can reduce um, the rational number uh, by the common multiplier, and common multiplier is CD, obviously, so this is the same thing as 1 over 1, which is a unity. So if the result of multiplication is unity, that's what we call that one is a reverse of another. All right, so this is a definition of the division. And as you see, any two rational numbers, uh, as long as B, C, and D are not zero, can be divided one uh, by, by another. Now, going back to the integer numbers and, and pseudo-integer representation of uh, our integers among rational numbers, what we can say is that 123 over 1, which is actually 123 in integer number, um, if you will um, multiply it by 1, 123, you will get 123 times 1, 123, and 1 times 123 again, 123, which is reducible to 1 over 1. So we have two different numbers which, if multiplied, result by 1. What does it mean? It means that this number, 1 over 123, can be called an inverse of original number 123 over 1. So if uh, among, the uh, among the integer numbers you cannot find anything which is an inverse of 123, among these rational numbers it's very easy to do. You just change the order of left and right part um, uh, in this string representation, and, and you got a new number uh, which serves as, as an opposite, as a reverse of the original number. Well, that basically concludes um, introduction of rational numbers using these strings. Now, what's the advantage? Let me just emphasize it again. I have constructed rational numbers. I'm not saying that, well, let's introduce a number which, if multiplied by 123, gives 1. This is not the proper definition, because maybe there is no such number, and if there is one, we have not really defined what's the operation of multiplication among them. So who knows? Um, in this way, I have basically constructed a new set of objects, which is uh, a set of 
strings representing rational numbers, if you wish, this type. And among these strings, I can very easily define this operation of division for um, uh, a reverse uh, element to anything in, in, in very defined and constructive um, way. So that's what's, that's, that's what's very important. This is a constructive approach which allows to basically say, I'm not defining some abstract object which has certain properties. I'm saying this is an object and these are the properties. So from the strict uh, position, it has much more weight. And that was the purpose, basically, of this lecture, to satisfy those people who uh, feel that definition of 123 reverse as just the result of a multiplication of some number, um, which gives one, that this type of a definition is really lightweighted. Um, this is much more rigorous, and uh, it's definitely not the only one which people can use to more or less rigorously uh, introduce uh, the rational numbers, but that's just one of those approaches and uh, the one which gives you at least some positive feeling that certain level of rigorousness is really needed and this is the way to basically achieve it. Uh, thanks very much.